topic number four, Trove Topics. As, uh, as always, I kind of open this up to the community, and uh, we got a handful of, uh, of questions tonight, so we'll just kind of rapid fire through some of these so, uh, so, so we can let you get away and get to bed. Um, uh, feel free to be part of the show by tweeting at me or at, uh, at Trove Talk. Uh, with the hashtag Trove Topics, or don't because like nobody used the hashtag this week. <laughs> Everybody just responded to the last minute tweet I sent out for this, which is fine because I've got the whole list here anyway. But but yeah, I mean like use the hashtag, guys. I created it for a reason. Um, don't don't worry about it. Uh, so up first, Brandon Gan at Games Gan, uh, friend of the show, asks: In the spirit of Halloween, what is the most frightened you've been in a game? Do you have an answer for this one? Because I can immediately think of like one of my examples. I don't play much in the way of horror games, but the uh, the go to story I always like to tell is uh, Gone Home, which is not at all a horror game, but it's like it's it's in the guise of a horror game where you're just kind of wandering through an abandoned house, and there is a very specific moment in it. And uh, uh, I've had a Twitter conversation with Steve Gaynor now about this, where uh, if you like pick up a certain thing it triggers a light to pop and and go out and um, i was playing it here one night in uh in like late not knowing kind of what the game was actually about so i was thinking it was like a horror game but i'd been hearing such great things about this so i was trying it out and that thing popped out and i was like nope i'm done and i put the game away and didn't come back to it until it came to console like two years later and uh and so steve gainer in like the director's commentary talks about being like this is this is like the one place where we really had some fun with it and we're like yeah we're gonna lean into the horror thing so i tweeted at him and i was like hey that one thing you did the the light popping yeah that kept me from your game for two years so Good job, <laughs> and and we had a little laugh about it on Twitter. So that's that's probably like, I mean, I like I'm just not a fan of like jump scares at all. So anytime they happen in a game, like I don't play horror games because of that. Like I like Resident Evil's never been my kind of thing until dawn. I didn't play. I was playing through the Wolfenstein games recently, and they have a couple like things pop out at you, like uh, an enemy pops out at you. And I was like, nope. <sighs> so that's. Any anything that that happens um, gets me, and and Gone Home is is probably the the best funniest example of such a such a moment. So how about you? Any uh, frightening elements from games of your past? Yeah, so like I don't really play horror games, and I'm also like I just don't get scared that often. And so like I can watch horror movies and play horror games and stuff, and it just doesn't really hit me in the same way. But I do have two stories of, like, the first time playing Bioshock, there's a part where you, like, go through a room, and when you come back, and then, like, the enemy, like, dropped off the ceiling and, like, landed in front of me. And I oh, think yeah. it's one of the only times I've played a game, and I literally, like, jumped. Because it's just, like, that kind of, that, like, jump scare. And I literally did jump, and I remember being, like, I didn't remember being that scared, but I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. And I was like, so there's definitely that. And then the story I've been telling lately is I did a PSVR demo for the Resident for, and I got Resident Evil. Mm -hmm. And this this was at the GameStop Expo. And uh, I they basically gave you whatever demo was like you would wait in line and whatever demo like you was available. That's what you did. You didn't get to pick. Yeah. So I go talk. I was talking to the guy while he was prepping the VR headset. And he was like, I was going to do the Resident Evil demo. And he goes, do you play horror games? And I was like, no. And he was like, well, and he was like, are you like afraid of them? Or do you have like a heart problem? And I was like, no, they just don't scare me. And he was like, well, let's try it. And he's like, you know, it's VR. And I was like, and then I is, and I asked him as he's like putting on the headset. I go, is this the one in the PS in the PlayStation Store right now? And he goes, yeah. And I go, oh, I played this before. And he was like, oh. And he was like, what ending did you get? And I was like, I didn't know. I don't know what the endings are called. So I was basically like, oh, I got this ending. And he was like, well, let's do it anyways, because like you can, you like, we'll get you a different. You might get a different ending. And so I went through the entire demo. I basically did all the same things I did before because, like, I wasn't going to, like, look around for, like, new things to do, I guess. Like, I just, like, I don't know. This is what you do in the demo. And it, like, didn't scare me whatsoever. And then it, I beat the demo. It fades to black. And I'm basically kind of, like, looking around like this. And the dude grabs the controller out of my hand. That was scarier than anything <laughs> in the entire fucking demo. <laughs> nice. Because like yeah. I have the I have the headset on and I'm just like in blackness and then somebody just grabs it out of my hand and I was like and then like they ripped the headset off and I was like fuck that was terrifying. <laughs> well, there you go. 
Um, <laughs> excellent, excellent examples. All right. Um, up next, uh, Chelsea at Chelsea from ATX. Congrats on the new job, Chelsea. Um, uh, and, and tell her I say hi, Frank, since she's over in your neck of the woods now, or you're over in her neck of the woods now. Um, she asks, how do we meet? And then she also asks if we have short-term, long-term goals and any weird hobbies and collections. So um, so how we met, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll dive into telling the story. No, I um, want you to do it because I, I don't, I, every time, like I've told this story before, but I don't know if I've ever heard like your perspective on it. Okay, so, uh, so we met, uh, I popped into a, uh, a Sean Pitts Twitch stream. I think he was probably Destiny because that's pretty much all he was streaming back then, uh, back in January. And I was putting out the feelers out there to see if uh, if he wanted to go out to uh, to, to pack south because um, that was coming up in a few weeks. And I was like, well, like I'm I'm, you know, I like if I want to do PAX East later, maybe I can do PAX South first and kind of be uh, like that can kind of be my my way into to the show. And uh, and so I like I asked kind of nonchalantly, like, hey, I, I'm thinking about doing this. I don't know if I'm going to. And within half an hour, like we had six people, six or seven people that had all agreed, and you were one of them. And we're having this whole Twitch conversation about, um, oh, you also live in Arizona, okay? So, and and you hadn't ever flown before, so uh, so I ended up booking our tickets to RTX or to Pack South. Um, and yeah, like we like within a half hour of popping into the stream, we had like a group that was going to stay together. We had like we had hotel tickets. We had um, uh, event tickets for like some of the days if we ha if we could get them kind of thing, and uh, and so yeah that was we that was how we like digitally met like I, I I like I knew about you I like I recognized you from like from Twitter and stuff beforehand but that was like our first like real interaction going on and then aside from that um, uh, I also picked up happened to pick up um, uh, Fallout. Um, like the Fallout Nuka Cola stuff from from Target, and uh, and we had like I had an extra, I got an extra one, um, or I got an extra, like I got three bottles of it when uh, when one of my local targets had it. Um, and you reached out because you saw it on Twitter. And we're like, hey, can I uh, like where'd you get it? Uh, and and came by, and they were gone by the time you had it. And I was like, well, like I don't need all three of these. And so we met up at a Portillo's, and I gave you one of those. And then, like a couple weeks later, was because that, that was before we that was before we even went to to um, pack south, right? Mm. Now, well, now, now, I'm, now I'm a little like, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. So I I gave that to you before we went to pack south, um, and then like yeah, a week later we were like we at the airport uh, waiting uh, waiting to hop on a plane to San Antonio. Yeah, and like was... we basically had the interaction about the fallout soda, and then. And then when you were like, oh, you can have one of mine. And then I was like, I didn't want to take it from you because I was like, oh, I don't want to take it from you. And then we decided to do Pack South. And then we met up for lunch. And then that's when you gave me the one bottle. And that was the first time we ever like met in person. Yep. Yep. And then and then you've abandoned me to, <laughs> to Austin because you made the right call. Get it, getting out of Phoenix. Good call there. Um, so, yeah, I think I, I think that's the the gist of the story of how we met. Digitally through a through a Twitch stream where we made the impulsive decision to go to Pack South, <laughs> and then we've been to like half of the other events this year. Uh, what else have we done? We did uh, Kind of Funny Live, hmm. uh, Pax West most recently, and then RTX. I think and we're let's, the and let's play live. And oh, and let's play, yeah, let's play live in uh, in LA. We did that one, um, and then yeah, you you did so I did Pax East, which you didn't do, and you did uh, the GameStop expo which i did not do yep and then i'm uh next week i'm going to uh sit back to san francisco for uh for ign mm. for their house party so i'll be there uh next weekend or the the friday that this week is po that this episode is posting uh friday saturday sunday and then uh and then we're gonna see each other at uh at psx again yep. this year and it's i officially been, uh, requested my time off already and i even talked to my boss about it i'm feeling good at least about friday saturday sunday monday excellent I'm Very trying cool. for Tuesday, but I don't have any promises on Tuesday. Yeah, that's. I mean, do it. Do what you can. We will. Yeah. Like, I'll, we'll be there. I'll be there, yeah. and a couple other people will be there. So <laughs> we'll we'll have some fun. Hopefully, the kind of funny guys show up. 
um, <laughs> since we like hanging out with them with these things. But uh, if not, uh, we'll we'll be in Anaheim and playing lots of PlayStation stuff. So. Yep. Um, so short-term, long-term goals. Um, I don't know if, uh, if you want to go ahead and dive into this one, since I feel like I just talked a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, short-term, I think it's definitely just like, I've still been kicking, or I'm still working on this idea for a podcast that I've had. I haven't really talked about it that publicly. There's just like a handful of friends that know about it. And uh, moving to Austin really put a lot of things on hold. So that's why I kind of put that. I was hoping to have that done by the end of the year, but so that's kind of put that on hold. But actually, I'm probably going to soon start working on that again because I had an idea for an intro this morning, which is like more than I because like I have the idea, I have the name, I have like a the, like Twitter handle registered already. Like I have a couple things in place. I just needed to work it on a couple other things, probably like a website, and I need I want like animated intros. And I, but I was like, I can't have intros and logos and stuff if I don't have the idea for what they should be. Mm -hmm. So I had an idea this morning that I'm kind of interested in toying around with. So I'm hoping to do that. It's, I was hoping to have it done by the end of this year, like I said. So it's probably going to be like an early 2017 thing because even like moving here and then paying rent and then going to PSX, it's hard to also buy podcast equipment. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. and, th and thanks to, uh, thanks to Joe for letting you lend. Uh, or lending you his stuff. Yep. Yep. And uh, <laughs> I mean, you're, like you're you're appearing on my uh, on my Google Hangout as something games, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Yep. <laughs> He's this is legit stuff. This is literally his computer, his webcam, his microphone. These are his headphones. This is his DX racer that he got from Alex's ease. <laughs> yep. Well, I guess I'll have to have him on the show soon, and then we'll get this whole same background again. <laughs> yep. Exactly. And so I. Uh, um, and then long term, I would like to get into more production stuff because, I mean, I guess when you just hang out with lots of creative people, it's hard not to be motivated and creative. Mm -hmm. But also, I think, too, just like I would I would like to end up at Rooster Teeth one day in terms of like I just from the moment I got in interested in like so being a kind of funny fan, I was like, oh, I love kind of funny. But I was never like I want to work for kind of funny. Uh -huh. and but when i got into rooster teeth i was like this is such a fun and like cool environment and like people i want to be around and like basically the easy way i say is i want to make cool shit with cool people yeah and so i'm like and that's part of the reason i moved to austin because i'm like rooster teeth is here besides the fact that i have friends here already and i'm just like i want to it's a cool place and there's cool people and i want to just do it so i would like to get into more production stuff and hopefully get over there doing production stuff for them and also I have when talking when we talked about writing earlier, I started kind of writing again because I had an idea when Max Landis was on the Game Over Greggy show and he talked about him's writing and I've heard him talk on podcasts about writing before and it reminds me about how like I used to write and I used to just like pitch ideas to people and stuff. So I'm like, I kinda wanna do that again. So I had an idea for a Hotline Miami movie that I've been working on. And it's basically I have two versions. I have the like the hundred and fifty million dollar like Universal gave me money to make a movie version and i have the like 40 minute short film version that's extremely close to the game and it's basically like basically like silent protagonist very gory very like the same synth soundtrack as the game it basically follows the game and it's just like and, and i'm really passionate about it and i would honestly like to make film that as a movie mm -hmm. and then writing that has kind of like spun off into other video game movies that i've been going toying around with because i had an idea for a scene that i'm like oh it doesn't work for the Hotline Miami movie and i'm like but what if it was in like a party hard movie? So I'm like, I basically have a rough idea for party hard movie. I have a rough idea for like a punch club movie. I have a rough thing for a Firewatch movie. And well, I basically making a Firewatch movie. I don't know if you that's saw actually that. that's why that's why I started working on it is because I had an idea for uh, I had a couple ideas for it. So I was like, huh? And I was like, what if? I was like, how cool would it be if I started a production company and we made like indie video game movies? that are like 30 to 40 minute short films if not even longer and we just like basically it would be a lot of like one for one of like what the game is just in like live action and i have like ideas for like cool shots and stuff so that's something i'm kind of fucking around with and this is the first time i've ever i think talked about it publicly or even like told another person about it actually i told i told christian pixel brave about some of my uh hotline miami movie ideas because i knew since he loves like since he's super into production and i told him like i have an idea for this shot and he's like oh that's really cool imagery and i'm like so i'm like you know i guess i feel comfortable enough on the podcast talking about it maybe it also motivate me to actually move forward with it 
There you go. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, uh, as for me, uh, short-term goals are um, at, like just continuing to kind of build up my my skill set in terms of um, like I, I want to turn this more into something that's not just like me cutting out the Google Hangout clips and putting it out there on on YouTube. I want to edit something together, um, have an intro, have an outro, um, ha like have chirons and stuff. So I, I like I need to short term is teach myself editing better um, and, and put that stuff together. And then long term is is still like get out to San Francisco and go work at a place like IGN, um, GameSpot, something like that. Um, like a whole bunch of people leaving GameSpot recently. So like I, like I am immediately checking like their their website like pretty much every other day to to see if any openings are coming up. Um, in the meantime, just kind of continuing to uh, to plug away things at work, which affords me the opportunity to go out and do a lot of this stuff um, on my own dime. So um, that's a ton of fun, and and I'm not gonna walk away from that anytime until I've got like another thing solid lined up. Uh, any weird hobbies or collections? Um, I mean, it kind of depends. Like, gaming is not a weird hobby, but I do have, like, I have that fucking sealed copy of, of Vegas Stakes. <laughs> yep. And, like, stuff like that, and, like, Freak Style. And I didn't I didn't bring this up to you, but I did buy Vegas Dreams. Okay. On eBay. The Disappointed, though, because, like, the artwork's, like, faded. So you can still see the artwork, but, like, the color's gone. So I'm like, that's a dis that's a disappointment. It doesn't have this beautiful brown cover art that is mm -hmm. part of the game. So I'm like, uh, so I mean, it's kind of it's kind of a weird collection I got going on. Plus all the other shit. Like I have all the, I don't know. Like I have a lot of weird, I have a lot of weird things. Um, I mean, the it's not it's not necessarily weird, but I have every Lego Dimensions thing that's been released so far, uh, with the exception of the Supergirl thing, which I'm still hopeful I'll like get at some point um uh from from somebody uh so that's like that's the collection that's like most on my mind outside of that i've got like i'm looking around by my my little studio and i've got shit ton of dvds and video games from like all generations um collected plays for a long time like i would like i would any time i would uh like see um uh, see like scripts in a in a bookstore or something like that I'd, I'd like grab them and uh, or I would order um, plays like from dramatists publishing or Samuel French like the the publishing houses I would just order whatever like the hot new plays were in a given season to to kind of read and and, uh, and have kind of in my in my collection so um, yeah those are it's, those are my uh, outside uh, of like weird hobbies I don't I don't know I don't really have anything else outside of that Another yeah. one for me is uh, lanyards, because <laughs> since you mentioned earlier, we traveled to so many events. It became a thing at Pax South between me and Zyger, where we just got all the free lanyards we could. So at one point, I'm sure there's photos of either of us wearing like 15 lanyards at once, and basically it, that's just transcended. Where like if someone's giving out a free lanyard, like I'm gonna take it, and I was just putting them on like my one doorknob, and then I've even bought some lanyards, and it's literally like the doorknob of where I used to live is like was too full. And like, so I'm sure it'll be like that way here too. And I'm just like, and that's that weird ass collection is only going to grow the more places I travel to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, up next, we have uh, Cameron Abbott, last week's guest at Unsexiest Comedy, asking uh, you specifically, how is Austin and why did you leave me, Frank? I loved you and you threw it all away. Best wishes, heart you. <laughs> so, how is Austin? It's we, uh, we fantastic. Kind of didn't so really dive into it, but yeah, you, you, Made the big old move out to Austin a few weeks ago, um, leaving leaving Cam and I out of the uh, the Arizona heat for the Austin heat. It actually hasn't been too hot here. It, it, like my first week here, it rained like six out of like the seven days. Nice. And uh, also, like I mean, I've it's been fantastic so far, and I've been having a good time. Like it's definitely like. It's definitely a cool place. Like, I haven't been, like, downtown yet or anything. Like, I've spent, like, 90% of my time at work. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely, like, I don't know. Like, I'm definitely enjoying it, and I'm happy. It even, too, like, I can't, because the NDAs, I can't really talk about it, but I went to I went to a couple live tapings of a new Rooster Teeth show. 
Yeah, cool. And I got to be in like the audience. And so that was another thing too for me about being in Austin is that like Rooster Teeth will be like, Hey, we're recording something. We need people. And I'm like, I'm there. Yeah. Nice. And I'm just like, so, and so, you know, it's been great. I've seen, uh, I've seen like Snapchats of like you guys going to a warehouse or something like that. So I'm like, yeah, oh, that was very cool that you're getting to do that. Um, it, it, Cause I know how much that like, yeah, how much you enjoy that kind of stuff. Um, very cool. Um, Zyger asks to ask if you are hungry. Oh, uh, we've yeah. Been, we've been talking for like three and a half hours, so I imagine you probably got to be. <laughs> On the real side, yes, because I also didn't eat at work today, so I've been hungry for like 10 hours. Well, now I feel like an extra dick. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're not You're not a dick. And also, to answer Zyger's question specifically, though, it's yes, and it's a we hungry. You hungry? Okay, that's um, a that's a that's a real funny inside joke that only me and Zyger and a couple other people will understand. I feel like I was around for it, but it was one of those it was at the GameStop playing. Expo. Oh, okay, all right, then, then I, I can fill you in. I, that's, I can fill you in later if you want. That's that's all right. Leave me out of this one. That's <laughs> you guys are fine having that inside joke on your own. Uh, he also asks if there is anything. Oh, I also didn't give out his formal Twitter handle at Zyger one three three seven. Jonathan Zyger Landeros. Uh, ask if the, uh, anything you missed from AZ. Anything uh, you're missing from Arizona yet? I mean, you pretty much a little bit. But I mean, pretty much the main thing I miss is just kind of like you and Cameron, really. Like, I miss not being able to hang out like we would do. Or we can't go on our mandates anymore. Yeah. And it's also funny how you noticed that my first answer wasn't, oh, my family. <laughs> it's, it's all right. I, I know that there's, there's complicated stuff ish there i mean they're all they're all good i honestly like distance makes the heart grow fonder like i've talked to them more than i've talked to them in literally like all year just in like three weeks since i've been here because like they'll call or i'll call and just see how they're doing and like there was like my dad's a mechanic so there was like auto tech stuff going on at our work so i called them and i was like telling them all this crazy shit that they were doing and i was just like you know fun stuff like that nice uh zyger also asks uh, why Circle Pizza comes in a square box? Do you have an answer for this, Frank? And so it fits in the trash can. So it fits in the trash can? Mm. Okay. Sure. I'll go with that. I, mean, yeah. I, I imagine square boxes are just cheaper to manufacture than circle boxes. Because um, you'd have to carve out the circle instead of... But is, if, it's a, if it's a circle, is it actually a box, though? Or is that exclusive to squares? I mean, I guess, I guess it would be a cylinder if it is a circle box. Like you've got the circle and then the the height for the pizza, because um, it's not really a square. It's not really a square. It's more of a you know, a, a box. <laughs> um, anyway, fuck you, Zyger, for asking weird <laughs> shit. Um, but he also asks what movie we're watching at PSX. All right, so I already got it? I got answers for this already. Yeah, uh, of course you do. Yeah. So I, I was very tempted to just to, like skip over this tweet, but I figured I'd at least give you the opportunity <laughs> to, to to warn me about how you're going to piss me off at PSX. <laughs> for so, for those that don't know, that, like every show we go to together, um, uh, Frank and I have been basically room rooming at, um, and so at PAX West, at RTX, and at Kind of Funny Live. Um, actually, I guess we didn't really watch anything at RTX. Uh, but at Kind of Funny Live and at, at PAX West, we basically watched bad movies every night, starting with Unfriended and most recently culminating with Alvin and the, Chipmunks, the Road oh, Chip, which, which Zyger asks you to recap, and we're not doing that because fuck you, Zyger. <laughs> but go ahead. What do you have lined up for PSX? Or what are you interested in watching at PSX? So basically the two ideas I already got prior is one of them is called Fun Sized Horror. And... It's a horror movie, as most of the bad movies we watch are. But what it is, it's it's a collection of online horror shorts. So it's actually 21 different five-minute horror movies in an hour and a half. And some of the horror movies have, like, parts missing because they cut it down to, like, fit into the movie. And uh, that's basically... uh, So that one's a really good one. Some of them, real bad. Some of them, real funny. And one of my favorite ones is called The Crazy Fucking Kid from Apartment B. Okay. Uh, because they're all individually named, except for not all of them. Some of them just start and don't yeah. tell you. And okay. uh, the other one I got to is it's called Chill, the Killing Game. 
Okay. It's basically basically the way I could pitch that one is it's like Clue. <laughs> it's like how about we just watch Clue then? Clue, an actual good movie. <laughs> just watch Clue. I, I, can watch I'd, be, I'd be fine with that. Like the the like after Road Ship, <laughs> like you, you uh, like I finally was like, no, no more shitty movies. And you found Blues Brothers. I was like, this. Let's just do this. Why can't we just do this, guys? <laughs> and then we all felt. So- <laughs> to be fair though, when we when Zyger said what movie should we watch, and we said, I don't know, Trevor, what do you think? And you said, I don't care, or like I don't know. And then that's when we turned on the road ship. Like you had a say. It's I, I want you I want you guys to pick a good movie. I don't want to have to say, let's watch this. Because that's just as bad as you guys saying, let's watch this. <laughs> uh, whatever. Fuck you, Zyger. Fuck you and your shit and your damn questions. All right. Uh, we got a, a trio of questions from Pixel Brave, uh, Christian, at Pixel Brave on Twitter. Asks, uh, first question, if you could take a selfie with anyone from history, past or present, who would it be? Do you have anybody for this? Zyger. Z- Zyger, that's who you want to take your selfie with? Well, you'll be in luck in, a few, in, a few, uh, in, a, in like two months. And he'll be 21 finally. So, well, you won't. So. He'll be able to. He'll be drunk. You you can get you can get a selfie with drunk Zyger. There you go. Um, mine uh, it's cliche, but I went with Obama. Um, I think it'd be really cool to have a selfie with the first uh, African American president. Uh, with my some my often passion for politics, um, which I don't like. I mean, it's definitely on Twitter more than it's anywhere else that I'm really talking about it because I feel like I can just at least like tweet stuff out there um but yeah um that'd be a a nice uh, kind of monumental selfie to have um sorry my joke answer is also alvin from the road ship <laughs> all right don't make me don't make me end this early um uh christian also asks what subsection of fantasy do you prefer swords and shields or space and lasers um i tend to probably lean towards space and lasers like if uh like like um, Bethesda is what I always go to, and I prefer Fallout over Elder Scrolls, for example. Um, Elder Scrolls is good, and I enjoy it, but I I lean towards um, Space and Lasers, or like with Bioware, like I lean towards Mass Effect over Dragon Age, tying it back to uh, to the favorite game segment. How about you? Absolutely, Space and Lasers. Like actual fantasy of like swords and shields never really did it for me. And so that's why, but like, I, that's why, like, I love Mass Effect, but I don't really, I never played Dragon Age, and like, the Elder Scrolls doesn't do it for me, but I love Fallout, and that's also the thing I'm excited. That's why I'm excited for Cyberpunk 2077, yeah. Because to me, that's going to be that jump of like, oh, here's The Witcher, but oh, here's the sci-fi version with the gameplay of The Witcher, yeah. And I'm just going to be like, nice, very cool. And then uh, last question from Christian: Was there ever a weird gaming, it's not what you think it is moment that you had to try and explain? Do you have anything? Uh, not like I don't have a specific story, but I know there's definitely been because you know how like whenever you're watching a movie and when your parents walk in, that's when people are fucking. Yeah, it's kind of like that for games, and like there's definitely like I remember being nervous anytime I was playing Far Cry Four or Far Cry Three because I knew that there was that like sex scene with like nudity in it, and I was always I was always like I can't play Far Cry Three while other people are home in case the sex scene just starts. But mm-hmm. that's like that's like thirty hours into the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, my, uh, the, uh, the one I think of, um, pretty much immediately, uh, there's two, um, the first one, uh, both of them like old PC stories, um, where, uh, so a friend of mine, my best friend growing up and I, uh, would play Duke Nukem 3D a lot. And uh, in Duke Nukem 3D, you can like flash cash and a stripper will like, um, like pull open her top and she's got like tassels on and uh, that alone was one of those uh, was one of those cases where like my dad would walk in and be like what like what's going on and like we'd immediately then go like just shoot her or something like that. Um, but even more on top of that, my friend and I like took a screenshot of like one of those images and like went into like MS Paint and like made nipples instead of tassels, um, just like because that was what we were doing in our like prepubescent like horny stage this is like well before i'm like doing anything porn wise or anything but 
he was more into it. So like we did it and, and I like, so I remember that. So we had like a Duke Nukem 3d screenshot somewhere saved on my parents' computer. That was basically like MS paint edited to have like nipples um, instead of booby tassels. Um, and then kind of in that same vein, like when I am uh, like a couple years later and playing something like the Sims, um, I definitely downloaded like nude patches to like remove the censorship or whatever. And my dad like found the new patch files on the on the server. And was like, "What's this?" And I, was, and I like I BS and was like, um, "Oh, it's not what you think it is. It it must be like I downloaded this other thing and that came down with it accidentally. So oops." And I was like, "No, I I downloaded because I was a dumb, stupid, like horny kid um, that that needed to see pixel boobs or whatever." So uh, so yeah, it was like those are the two stories that I remember where I'm like. Yep, that was my dumb, my dumb youth, where it was like, it's not what you think it is, even though it's actually exactly what you think it is. So sorry. Well, I just love that like you can like it's like oh it's America. So when you're like oh like I showed her the cash and she like opened her top or whatever, and my dad walked in and he's like oh what are you doing? And then I'm like, and I shot her, and I'm like, and he's like oh okay that's okay that's not what I thought it was that's okay. Yeah, no, perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Like that—that's a violent game. That's fine. Whatever. Yeah. But boobs. Nope. Welcome yeah. to America. Um, uh, all right. And then uh, last question I got uh, came in uh, as we started recording. Um, but uh, my friends over at Toys for Games, uh, shout out to at Toys for Games and uh, and all the great coverage they do on uh, like Lego Dimensions and stuff. That's what I uh, what I check them out for. Um, uh, best video game sequels. I mean, Mass we touched two. Mass Effect Two is kind of the that's definitely a solid go to, especially now having ha having played Mass Effect One, like it and everything it does to uh, to do better than uh, than Mass Effect Two. I mean, like another like Persona Four Golden is mm. uh, a, a solid solid sequel as well. I mean, especially even if you consider it just as a sequel to the the original Persona Four, um, I think it's a, a, a standout. Uh, option I'm trying to think if anything like yeah i mean those are those are probably the a couple of solid entries i don't know mm -hmm. if i have anything else worth uh highlight i mean like uncharted it was another one that like did uh, uncharted 2 leaps and bounds above uncharted 1 assassin's creed 2 even though i hate it way better than assassin's creed 1 um anything else you can think of uh, not really off the top of my head. That's pretty much the ones that I thought of. Yeah. Cool. Um, so that's uh, that's the episode. Thanks for uh, thanks for bearing with me. Uh, as like, yep, there's another one that's about three hours forty five minutes. This just kind of seems to be where we're landing. On uh, it's, I, I came to the I've I've been coming to the realization where it's like really the gaming history episode or like that topic. I could like that could be a podcast in and of itself, and that's two hours right there. Usually, just talking to somebody about that. So, it's, this is basically two podcasts in one that you're getting here. You're getting that gaming history podcast, and then all this other shit that we talk about podcast. So, enjoy. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, if you if you have stuck around, thank you for for being my guest, Frank. Um, uh, especially on short notice, since I only asked you like yesterday. Um, uh, any uh, anything you want to plug? Any uh, any pitches or any any plugs you want to make? Well, I mean, I don't know if you want to ask me to start pitching things because I can start pitching like balls commercials. Okay. Well, aside from aside from balls, pitching things that you're actively working on. <laughs> so yeah, like uh, my my Twitter is like I, I'm a, I'm a relevant jokes on literally everything. That's my username for everything. But the best place you could probably find me on is Twitter. Or if you want to like hit me up and interact with me, also I do. A podcast. I do two podcasts usually that I appear on. One of them is on the table, and the other one's the Fuckery Cast. And those are found at twitch.tv slash something games and also on podcast services like iTunes and SoundCloud. And that's something games with a Z, right? Yeah. Something, it's like something Gomez, but with an A instead of the O. So it's games. <laughs> nice. What are, uh, just for uh, for those that aren't aware, what are, what's, uh, what are uh, off the, off the table and on the table, uh, and on the table sorry mm -hmm. and on the table and the fuckery cast what are what like what's the elevator pitch on each of those 
So usually on the table is mainly about video games and kind of what's going on that week. And also sometimes it kind of goes off the rails and into movies and other stuff as you know, it happens. Mm -hmm. And also then the fuckery cast is usually as the name would probably imply is involves a lot of heavy drinking and talking about random topics is most of them involving something in terms of usually sexually related, if not always, you know, and then also just kind of other things in that same kind of like mature adults only vein. And that's basically what that one's about. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, thank you again for, for being my guest this week. Um, uh, these will, uh, just for your edification, they'll start going out topic by topic Monday, uh, Monday through Thursday with a full episode posting uh, a, a week from today or a week from like, three hours ago for you, I guess, uh, on Friday. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, if you tuned in, if you're still with us. Um, and uh, and like, share, subscribe, all that fun jazz, which I keep forgetting to like actually say to do. Um, uh, comment, let me know your favorite games and who you want to see on the show. If you want to be on the show, let me know. Um, hit me up. I'm at Snarky Starkey on Twitter, or follow the show at Trove Talk on Twitter. Uh, you can find more of my ramblings. And like I said, I'm hoping to have kind of a week's worth of reviews posting uh, the week that this episode is going up with uh, reviews for games like Wolfenstein and Gears of War remastered. So it's not it's not going to be like Mafia 3 or anything like that. Um, I've just been working through some, uh, some backlog of games, but I figure I can write up some reviews on them. So... Um, uh, check those out at trevortrove.com. And uh, until next time, insert closing tag here. <laughs>